The movie begins with Danny who is concerned about her unresponsive parents, and she's deeply disturbed by her sister Terry's cryptic farewell email. Danny reaches out to her boyfriend Christian. Christian scolds Danny for her leniency as they discuss Terry's habitual vague messages. After their chat, Danny confides in a friend about the exchange with Christian, anxious that she might be scaring her boyfriend away. The friend assures Danny that she's doing fine, while Christian's friends advise him to leave Danny due to her baggage. An appealing waitress catches their attention, earning Mock's approving nod. They subsequently discuss their upcoming Sweden trip. Christian's phone rings abruptly. Despite Mock's assertion that Danny is emotionally manipulative, Christian picks up, hearing Danny's tear-filled voice on the other end. Danny's parents' house is broken into by firefighters as they recover Danny's parents, both of which were killed by Terry with carbon monoxide poisoning. Christian holds an inconsolable Danny. Months later, Christian invites Danny to a party where his friends discuss their imminent trip to Sweden for Josh's thesis on midsummer traditions. Danny, unaware of this plan, confronts Christian back home. He insists he had informed her, sparking a dispute. As Christian tries to leave, Danny pleads for a conversation. The following day, Christian tells everyone he invited Danny to come to Sweden. When she arrives, Mark and Christian have a talk while Danny talks with Pell about the trip to Sweden. They are actually going to study at a nine-day festival held by a small community. Pell presents Danny with photos of past festivals, piquing her interest before expressing condolences for her loss. On their flight to Sweden, Danny struggles with panic attacks. Upon arrival, they journey northward to Pell's village, stopping in a field filled with young returning locals. Despite Danny's hesitation, Pell's brother, Ingmar, introduces them to friends Simon and Corny, sharing some psychedelic mushrooms. As the group starts feeling the effects under a tree, Danny is rattled by distant laughter and music, leading to a terrifying hallucination. After a disturbing dream about her family, she wakes to find they've waited six hours for her. They proceed through the woods to the village, warmly welcomed by the community clad in festival attire. Danny basks in the tranquil atmosphere. Pell connects with an elder who announces the festival's commencement the following day. The arrival of music diverts them to the village center, where Sieve, another elder, joyously welcomes them to the midsummer feast held every 90 years. While a deformed child sketches in seclusion, Sieve ceremoniously passes torches to an older couple. As Maya prepares for the celebrations, the group spectates the villagers dance. Later, Maya subtly nudges Christian during the dance, and he joins in with Josh. Surprising Danny with a birthday present, Pell learns Christian forgot the occasion. Danny appreciates his gift, a portrait. Pell later guides the group through the village, answering Josh's queries about the community, including the children's education on ancient ruins. As Corny quizzes Danny and Christian about their relationship's duration, Christian catches sight of a distant off-limits temple. The group separates, with Ingmar showing Simon and Corny an illustration of a love tale and a cage bear. Meanwhile, Pell leads his friends to their beautifully adorned cabin accommodations, shared with other people in the community. While Danny explores the interior, she stumbles upon a wall filled with May Queen photos. Concurrently, Pell reminds Christian that he forgot Danny's birthday. When Danny inquires about the photos, the group gathers to explain. Christian attempts to salvage the situation by surprising Danny with a birthday serenade and a candle, admitting he messed up due to the constant daylight. As night falls and everyone prepares for bed, Pell indicates the festival's first day holds significant importance. Despite Josh being aware of this, neither he nor Pell discloses the details to the rest. Christian attempts to investigate online, but a lack of cell service thwarts him. The following day, the festival's first day commences. All gather at the communal table in front of the sacred temple, where young girls gather flowers nearby. Despite not knowing when to sit, the group follows the lead of an old couple who receive torches. As they begin to eat, everyone follows suit. Danny learns about the communal parenting practices as Mark eyes a girl at the opposite end of the table. A ritual performed by the old couple sees them carried away on their chairs. With everyone, except Mark following suit. The congregation gathers around a cliff for a sacred custom where the old couple gets their hands cut open, painting the ancient ruins with their blood. The woman jumps off the cliff to her death, which stuns Danny and the rest. The man follows suit but survives the fall, only to be beaten to death. 
causing further distress among the guests. Sieve, however, explains the custom as a joyous act of giving life away before it spoils, arguing that dodging the inevitable co-opts the spirit. Back at the village, the guests struggle to process the events, with Danny being particularly shaken. Christian and Josh decide to focus their theses on the village, causing a disagreement between them. Despite Christian's offer for collaboration or separate research on the same topic, Josh rejects it. Pearl pacifies the situation, explaining that the elders guard their traditions closely, limiting what they can write about. Danny, frantic, is comforted by Pearl, who empathizes with her grief, citing his own loss of his parents in a fire and the sense of family he found in the community. As the old couple's bodies undergo a ritual disposal, Danny questions Christian's indifference to the day's horrific events. He responds, explaining the cultural differences and encouraging understanding. That night, Danny is plagued by nightmares featuring scenes from the ritual and her family. Meanwhile, Myra is awake and places something underneath Christian's bed. The second day of the festival finds Danny sleeping late while Pell discusses the thesis terms with Mark and Josh. They learn about the love rune left by Maya under Christian's bed. Suddenly, they hear a man screaming and running toward Mark, who's urinating over a dead tree. The man lunges at him, but the others stop him. Pell explains to Mark that he disrespected an ancestral tree with a lot of meaning for the villagers. When Corny confides in Danny about her plans to leave with Simon, an elder informs her that Simon already departed. Danny shares this with Christian, who shows little concern and continues discussing the community's mating practices. Danny is invited to help cook, and they prepare meat tots, with Maya making a special one. Josh converses with an elder about the ever-changing sacred scrolls written by the disabled child. He learns that their oracles are the product of intentional inbreeding to keep their minds clear for divine interpretation. During dinner, Danny worries about Corny. Meanwhile, Mark is still worried about the man angry at him. As they dig into the meat pies, Christian finds pubic hair and catches a glimpse of Maya looking at him. Mark is led away by the girl he likes. At night, Danny asks Josh for another sleeping pill. Later, Josh runs to the scroll and starts photographing. He gets caught by a figure he thinks is Mark but gets whacked in the back of the head. The figure approaches us, but it's the disfigured child with Mark's mask. The next day, Christian dismisses Josh's disappearance at breakfast. An elder announces the theft of a sacred scroll, leading to suspicion among the guests. Pearl feels responsible, while Christian implicates Josh. Danny is sent off with the village women, and Christian meets with Sieve. As a dance competition unfolds, Danny realizes the tea served might contain mushrooms. Sieve informs Christian that he is approved to mate with Maya. Meanwhile, Danny, growing increasingly dizzy, is the last dancer standing and is crowned the May Queen. As she is escorted away, Pell greets her with a celebratory kiss. They lift Danny up and bring her to a table. She's in the lead seat, and everyone copies what she does. When Christian sits, she starts eating, and everyone else follows. He doesn't get what's going on and feels weird because of the tea. All the villagers cheer for the May Queen. They say she's part of their family now. Maya calls Christian over to follow her into a bond, and Danny sees that something's happening. Sieve tells Danny that as the queen, she has to bless their crops and won't let Christian go with her. Danny gets into a cart that some young village girls are pulling. As they take her away, Christian gets asked to go back to the bon as everyone stands for him. Danny performs a ritual to bless the crops. Meanwhile, the village elders are getting Christian ready to mate with Maya. They give him some more drugs and guide him to where Maya and some other women are waiting. Danny continues with her ritual. Christian and Maya mate while the other women sing. Danny gets back to the village, and a woman tells her that Sieve wants to see her. Curious, Danny wants to see what's happening in the bon as she hears something. A villager tells her not to peek, but she does anyway. Danny looks in and sees what's going on, then runs outside and starts screaming in complete agony. The women take her and put her to bed. She's freaking out, and the other women start copying her cries. Christian finishes his part of the ritual and runs out of the bon. He's disoriented and tries to get away when he notices a foot sticking out from the ground. Christian hides in a shed, where he finds Simon's dead body. One of the elders sneaks up on him and drugs him again. He wakes up to a woman telling him that he can't speak or move. The last part of the midsummer ritual begins with Danny leading it. Sieve announces that they will offer nine sacrifices to the village four of their own. 
four outsiders, and one chosen by the queen. Two of them have already given their lives, and two have volunteered, including Ingmar. Pearl gets praised for bringing new people to them. Danny has to pick the last of the nine. It's between a villager and a Christian. Although filled with anguish and sadness, Danny makes her decision and chooses Christian. They take the bodies to the sacred temple at the village's edge and carefully put them inside. The last one is being prepared by the elders and some kids. They cut a bear's body open and put Christian in it while he's still alive. The elders bless the sacrifice and give the two villagers some drugs. They set the temple on fire as part of a ritual while the whole community watches from outside. Everything inside burns, and the villagers shake and cry. Danny looks at the burning temple, her mind finally breaking, and smiles. Danny was obviously mistreated by Christian, and in the ending, Christian gets his just desserts. Danny has found a new family with the commune. By killing Christian during the purging ritual, she has allowed the darkness to leave her. What did you guys think of the film? It was a huge what the F is going on for me. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.